Hello and welcome to another episode of the School District of Osceola County STEM Mobile Lab presents Virtual Live 360 Tours. My name is Chris Tolliver and I will be taking you on another exciting behind the scenes field trip showing off some fantastic careers in the medical field. Today is really exciting because we are actually going to be in an operating room watching it prepped for a really important day. Now before we begin I will mention that this is a 360 degree video. You can turn and rotate the camera around to look wherever you want to as you listen. After the video, be sure to follow the link in the description below to fill out a survey that will enter you into a chance to win some fantastic prizes provided by Advent Health Celebration. Unfortunately, because of some pretty good reasons, we couldn't be in the room with the patient, but don't worry. I have also included a link in the description of what that procedure might have looked like. Well, with all that, let's jump into the tour. Welcome to the operating room at Advent Health Celebration Hospital. This is a very exciting because we are getting a behind the curtain look at what goes into preparing and operating room right before an important surgery. You will notice throughout this video that there are many people coming in and out the room, working on all sorts of equipment and tools to get ready for this procedure. I'm going to narrate and highlight as much detail as I can because so much is happening all at once and I didn't want you to get lost in the excitement. So before we begin, let's start on some direction. Right now, facing straight ahead should be the actual operating table. That'll be forward or ahead. When I point out something to your left or to your right, uh, it will be to the left or to the right of the operating table. Behind us is the big double doors where people are coming and going. So if you ever get lost in this 360 video, just find the table. Okay, so let's begin with where we are. It is bright and early in the morning, and the operating room is being prepared for a very important procedure. So for a little bit of background, a patient was reporting pain in their back and having extreme difficulty in moving. When they were examined, the doctors found that a tumor, a growth, had spread into the upper levels of their spine and it needed to be removed immediately. As you can see, there is not one person that is involved in this procedure. Many techs and nurses and pharmacists and cardiologists are all involved in protecting the patient during the several hours the patient is under their care. So again, I will do my best to point out the medical careers involved and I will tell you what I learned about them. After this segment, we're going to have some interviews with some of the people that were in the operating room, and they're going to tell you a little bit more detail about who they are and the career path that they took to get exactly where they are. A really good solid amount of teamwork happens between physician assistants and nurse practitioners. Physician assistants work on teams with physicians and surgeons and other healthcare workers. Now, their specific duties and the extent to which they must be supervised by physicians or surgeons, they differ from state to state. 
Physician assistants work in all areas of medicine, including primary care and family medicine, emergency medicine, surgery, and psychiatry. The work of physician assistants depend in large part on their specialty or the type of medical practice where they work. For example, a physician assistant working in surgery may close incisions and provide care before, during, and after the operation. A physician assistant working in pediatrics may examine a child and give routine vaccinations. In some areas, especially rural and medically underserved uh, communities, physician assistants may be the primary care providers at clinics where a physician is present only one or two days per week. In these locations, physician assistants collaborate with the physician as needed and as required by law. Some physician assistants make house calls or visit nursing homes to treat patients. They work closely with nurse practitioners. Nurse practitioners work independently or in collaboration with physicians. In most states, they can prescribe medications, order medical tests, and diagnose health problems. APRNs may provide primary and preventative care and may specialize in care for certain groups of people, such as children, pregnant women, or patients with mental health disorders. APRNs have some of the same duties as registered nurses, including gathering information about a patient's condition and taking action to treat or manage the patient's health. However, APRNs are trained to do other tasks, including ordering and evaluating test results, referring patients to specialists, and diagnosing and treating ailments. APRNs focus on patient-centered care which means understanding a patient's concerns and lifestyle before choosing a course of action. Some APRNs also conduct research or teach staff about new policies or procedures. Others may provide consultation services based on a specific field of knowledge, such as oncology, which is the study of cancer. So, okay. And then we have, that's a robot, that means our the blue one or the, the tall one? The white one next to her with the green scrub. Oh, okay. Um, and she's the representative for that company. Oh, okay. So she's here to support the case. She's a specialist in, in that. Mm -hmm. Mazor? Yeah, I've heard that. This is a good administration. So right now, the main career that we are observing is an operating room registered nurse. They are team members that go through an associate in nursing, which is a two-year degree plus prerequisites, or a four-year BSN. After graduation or transfer from a non-operating room unit, an RN usually goes through a six-month paid internship program that varies in length from hospital to hospital. So what they do is this team member ensures that all legal documentation has been completed prior to surgery. They ensure that the patient is ready for surgery. So they do things like uh, check their labs, uh, the availability of their images, and things like that. They also assist the anesthesia provider during the induction of general anesthesia. That's a thing that kind of knocks you out right before a major procedure. They're the primary person positioning the patient for surgery. So you will have noticed that there was someone that was uh, adjusting the pads and the controls on the operating table. Now at the same time, they are also in charge for maintaining the safety of the patient and their nerves. They ensure medications and dosages are accurate and available at the sterile field and they conduct a count of the supplies and instruments used in the surgery. So you'll see to your right, there's a lot of unpacking of different medical equipment on that long table that has that uh, blue sterile cover over it. They also help the surgeon and other team members uh, don their gowns and gloves. Uh, they're opening supplies and instruments, and they also perform a timeout to double check that everything is correct. 
And then they also plug in all the equipment outside of the sterile field and provide troubleshooting as necessary. The RN also handles specimens and ensures that they are taken to pathology. They may also act as the surgical technologist as well, but a surgical technologist on the other hand cannot act as the OR RN. Not the group. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. Thank, Thank you. Um, so they'll be opening all of this. So all the supplies are opening right now, most likely. Um, mostly are disposable, so they'll be thrown away after the case. Right. And they're just checking the integrity of it, making sure if the package is not open, otherwise it's not sterile anymore. Mm -hmm. um, trays here, they have instruments and implants. They will be making sure that all the indicators have passed and that they show everything sterile in those trays. Okay. Um, all right, coming in behind us is a really cool piece of equipment, uh, and it's operated by a radio tech, a radiology tech, also known as an x-ray technician. So what a radiologic technician does is they, uses, they use x-rays and other technologies to provide images that help physicians and healthcare workers uh, do things like diagnose and treat health concerns. So, to obtain an image, you place and process x-ray film and position shields to protect patients from radiation. You, they end up playing a key role in helping to identify conditions such as cancers, ulcers, or break bones, uh, broken bones. So you could see this really big piece of equipment looks like a giant metal C that's being rolled in. That is their um, x-ray that they can use to look inside the patient during the procedure uh, to help assist uh, in the surgery. In addition to graduating from an accredited program, to become licensed, you have to pass a certification exam from the state or from the American Registry of Radiologic Technologists, the uh, ARRT. Uh, every state has its own specific state requirements as well. And to maintain certification, uh, radiologic technologist has to continue uh, a continuing education every two years to maintain that certification. Yeah, they all work for the same goal. Yeah, the safety of the patient. Mm -hmm. It's and really fast. I think that's something very unique about the operating room. We are very patient centered mm -hmm. because this patient can't defend themselves. So we are responsible for speaking up for that patient. So if there's anything that doesn't look right, anything that someone's doing that may not be in the best interest of the patient, we are speaking up. You have to and advocate for that person, hey, you need to change your mask. Hey, this and that. We're not shy <laughs> um, when it comes to the patient. Right. Coming into the room, we are starting to see our surgical techs, or surgical technologists. Now to become a certified surgical technologist, you enter into a program that lasts about 13 months. These team members have anatomy and physiology knowledge, and they are there to anticipate the needs of the surgeon. Some of their job responsibilities during a surgery is to prepare and maintain the sterile field where instruments are placed. They also hand instruments to the surgeon and may assist within the scope of practice. So for example, they may help retract tissue or organs. So the surgeon has access to the body part that they are trying to get to. I think what's really important to point out is that in this room, there's not just Advent Health Celebration employees. There's a very large host of other companies and representatives and vendors that 
work for companies, not for a, a hospital. And they specialize in the equipment that you see uh, to your left and uh, on the other side of the operating table, those really big machines that have specific operators. You'll see they may be dressed a little bit differently than the surgeons and techs here at Advent Health. Well, these representatives and these vendors, they go through a screening process to ensure that first they can enter the hospital. And once a hospital has approved of the vendor, they are brought in with the surgeon's permission to support a specific surgery. So what they are there for, they are very, very knowledgeable about their product, about their machine. So they help the surgeon throughout the entire surgery. Now they have no patient contact, uh, with exception. They specialize in operating their piece of technology. They usually have some sort of surgery background, but many of these representatives actually have business degrees. As part of their job is sales. So they go to a doctor's office in order to show off their products. So, while well, we're recording the whole thing, but not necessarily your voice to show the kids, but what's your background? Like, can you tell us a little bit? Because I really, like, for representatives, there's different types of backgrounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, sure. do you mind sharing so we can kind of yeah, show I've the been kids? Because there's sure. so many things. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. done this for over 20 something years. <laughs> <laughs> so long time. That was my first time therapist prior to. Okay. okay. So, that's what I, I had a background in my um, but not everybody has that. I mean, some people just have to agree, they don't have to agree. Right. It depends. So, yeah. okay. I, similar to her, my degree was in biological sciences and health professions, and I had a minor in psychology. Essentially, I was going to go to medical school. And then once I kind of looked into the years, the school, the debt, and pets associated with it, I kind of decided to go more of the business route. But when they took me out of college to do my job, about half of us were science backgrounds and the other half were business backgrounds, which kind of seemed to be the mix. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. So we have both of the Thank you. For yeah. Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, I think we're getting close to like 720. Um, do you mind if we yeah, yeah. move to the next um, Absolutely. Yeah. We'll be right back. Okay, so we have a medical professional here. His name is Chris. He's going to tell you a little bit about the pathway that he took and uh, the education that he went through and like why he is here doing what he does. Hi, I, I've been in radiology about 15 years. Uh, I started uh, at the school with, with, through Avins, Port Florida Hospital, uh, 15 years ago. It was a two-year program. Um, I first started, uh, I was interested in the basic x-ray, just, you know, bones, broken bones, and imaging, um, and that's kind of what I wanted to get into. And I started a uh, two-year program, finished, graduated, went through all the um, clinicals at the hospital, and I started here, uh, Celebration, in 2005, and I've been here ever since. And I've worked um, all different shifts, I've worked all different areas in the hospital. I've been uh, in OR the last three, four years mainly, but I've been uh, worked in the emergency room, working uh, all over the hospital and uh, I really like what I do. I feel like it's a very important, um, you know, uh, modality and because you have to show the doctors, you know, all different kind of views and, you know, it's very important, especially in the OR, um, you know, what the surgeons need to see. So uh, I do so, like what I do. So you are going to be in the OR today. What right. is your primary role in the um, OR? Today I'm going to be um, working on a spine case and it's basic, basically showing positioning um, where the needles and where the instruments are going to be going to show the actual levels of the spine so the surgeon can see exactly you know what areas they're going to be you know going into um, it, it's it's important because you know different levels of the spine you have to know exactly where the starting point is and the ending point is so and uh, how how much uh, schooling did you did you go to in order to it's be a, a radio tech? It's a two year program. Um, it took me a little bit longer than two years because I had a lot of prerequisites. So it probably took me about three years in total. But the actual program is two years. 
And uh, where did you where did you go for your training? Was that a college or a technical it was, school? It was a college. Um, it was it used to be called Florida Hospital College, but it's okay. actually now it's Abbott. It's so uh, it's the uh, it's two year yeah it's university now. Okay. All right. Well, excellent. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, I appreciate, appreciate your time. Yeah, cool. yeah. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you, students. So coming back from career and technical education in Osceola School District, um, I'm here with a few fellow people who have an Advent Health celebration who's allowed us into this great experience of seeing the operating room. I want to introduce you to Jacqueline. Hello. And Jacqueline is going to tell us a little bit about how, what was her career path and what she does now here um, for Advent Health. So I'm a nurse practitioner and I work here with the neurosurgery group. Uh, pretty much what that means, working in the hospital, I see the patients as they come into the hospital, uh, before surgery, after surgery, taking care of any issues, uh, helping look at exams, ordering tests, labs, uh, pretty much taking care of everything outside the operating room to try and keep the surgeons in the operating room. Great. So what was your, how did you, what did you take in school? Uh, so. Actually, I kind of took a little unusual path to get here. Uh, I went to college and did a four-year degree in psychology, uh, and I ended up doing a, it's about two and a half year degree that's an accelerated Bachelor of Nursing. Uh, and in order to get into that program, you had to have already completed uh, the medical prereqs. So I, I had done that while uh, doing my, my first bachelor's. Uh, and then once I did that, I worked in the ICU for a little bit, uh, specializing in neuro, and went to a uh, master's program. That's about another two years. Right. That sounds like a lot of schooling. <laughs> but it seems like it's really interesting that your path was a little bit different, that you didn't start out knowing that you were going to end up here. Today. Right. <laughs> yeah, I was going to take a, a, a different path when I started college. And when I discovered nursing, I didn't know about it uh, until college. So when I, when I found out about it, really got a passion for it. Started working as a CNA and uh, in, in the local hospital, and and kind of had found that alternate path to get to nursing. Great. Can you tell us a little bit about the room we're in? Because you know our students right now are seeing everything that's in here. I noticed that the windows are fog. Why is that? Sure, absolutely. So on the other side of these windows is the operating room. Um, for patient privacy, we're able to turn the windows on and off and fog them. Uh, this is more kind of a control room. We have some equipment in here. Uh, computers and, and a lot of uh, extra kind of storage and okay. so kind of where we, we set up and kind of meet great between cases. All right. Well, thanks so much for let, um, letting us um, hear a little bit about your story. Um, Dr. Reddy? So, Dr. Reddy, obviously you're the surgeon for today. Is that correct? Uh, actually, this case, Dr. Torres, I have a case, you have a case next door. Yeah, we have a bunch of neurosurgery cases. So how many patients are here going to be having surgery this morning? Uh, let's see, we have two for our team and one for orthopedics, which is fine. So we have, a, um, and then we each have a couple cases on the day. So. Great. So can you tell us a little bit about your path and your journey sure. to get into healthcare? Sure. So I grew up in Michigan. Uh, my parents, uh, my dad is a cardiologist and my mom is an OBGYN doctor. Um, so they, they wanted me to be a doctor. <laughs> so, um, so you didn't have much choice, is that what you're telling actually, us? Totally, so I was, actually, I was really into math when you know, I was in high school, and so I went to college thinking I was going to do math and engineering. And after the first year, then I took a neuroscience course, and the brain is so cool, and uh, there's so much stuff we don't know about the brain. So I kind of got interested in that. Um, so then I kind of got into pre-med classes, did the neuroscience in college, and then um, I'm from Michigan, I went to University of Michigan for med school. Then, so the training is long in neurosurgery, seven years, um, but you do get paid um, from day one. So I uh, matched at the University of Iowa in my training, and uh, I was there for seven years, so it's 2004 to 2011. Went to Mayo for a year, did a fellowship. Yeah, I know, this <laughs> And uh, there's my voice, there's partner. <laughs> the partner is here. <laughs> and then uh, stayed on in Iowa, um, and uh, both of my girls were born there, and my wife is a professor of neurology there. We just came to Florida because we got a winter. My wife's from Georgia, so we came to Florida 2017. We were at the U University of Florida for a little bit. We came down here to Orlando. I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> I like putting uh, electrical things into people. So <laughs> deep brain simulators, spinal cord simulators, um, trying to. So those are surgeries where patients can be awake, is that correct? Yes, yes. You can be awake and you can kind of uh, uh, so test out how the electrodes and simulators are working. 
to make sure that people who have tremor, you can put an electrode right on one side of the brain and then get the tremor to stop. And you can test it out while they're awake. It's kind of a cool trick. Right. So students and teachers, I just wanted to let you know, so we're, um, Evan Health already produced a video of actually that whole entire surgery. And so it's going to be in a link um, down at the bottom after. Um, so you can go ahead and watch that with your students afterwards. It's really cool to see um, how this whole team um, was able to um, really help a patient. It's a really cool story as well. Yes, our first patient was a ventriloquist, so he brought his puppet in the upper. So that's kind of a <laughs> cool video. So, yeah. Well, great. Thanks for letting us yeah, share a little no, bit of your story. I think it's a, there's a lot of different avenues. There's a, it's a big team of people that work in neurosurgery and neuroscience, and there's so many different things, different ways you can come at and be part of the team. So we have a great team here. So it's definitely good to talk to everybody and find out, you know, what each one, each person does and how they got there. Great. Well, thanks for your time. We know you got to get to your patient. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, no problem. Well, thanks. Hi, Andrew. Um, I, um, I'm so interested. Um, a lot of our students are interested in going um, into PA school and yeah. um, to be a physician's assistant. And I think that that's um, a, a great career path for some of our students. And I would hope that you could tell a little bit about your story and how um, you decided to take that career path. Sure. So, yes, I'm Andrew. Um, so I'm a physician assistant. Um, my path, I guess, I, I went to undergrad and got a BA um, in biology. Um, after school, I needed a bunch of patient care experience, so I was uh, like a patient care assistant for a paraplegic gentleman in his home. Um, I worked uh, as like a clinical assistant, um, calling in prescriptions and seeing patients, bringing them back to rooms. I eventually made my way to the hospital and was a PCA on the ICU floors, taking care of post-operative like cardiac patients. Then I transferred to the IC, or sorry, to the ER, and was like an ER technician and did EKGs and put in IVs and drew blood and um, splinted casts of patients, um, all sorts of things. And, um, and so, Andrew, how long were you doing? How long? Yeah. Because I know PA school, you have to have that clinical experience in order to get into school. So, and how long were you doing that? Those so different jobs. From 2009 to 2013. Okay. And it varies. It's not like that's going to be the case for everyone. Some people come right out of undergrad and they have enough experience from their, you know, their their uh, jobs from the summer between school years, um, and they have really good grades, what have you, and they can get in. But it's very um, competitive. So I built up enough experience and uh, had all the coursework done, and I got into the PA program uh, actually in Florida, Barry University, um, and that program was 27 months, and it was. Uh, and that's Barry University down in Miami. That's correct? right. Yes, because there's one in St. Petersburg as well. Okay. Actually, they have two joint classrooms, and so it's all one program, but it was very interesting. So, yeah, 27 months, it was a year of clinical rotations, a year and a quarter of classwork, and then um, and you take a national certifying board, and you can go anywhere in the nation, I think, and beyond. And there are some other countries that accept the licensure and certification of PAs. So, so what's the difference, then, between <clears throat> a PA and someone who gets an MD, like a medical doctor? So, the uh, difference is they would go to medical school from your undergrad, That'd be a four-year program, and then from there they'd apply to residencies, which oftentimes are anywhere between three and seven years, and then you do a fellowship thereafter. And so, uh, so you're getting to work in the operating room before. I mean, I am. You're, before you're actually you're right. not you don't have as much specialty as a medical doctor. Not Correct. I can I can school. flip between any specialty at any point in time versus you know an MD has to go to like one route and kind of get into a residency program, say in neurosurgery. Well, that's that's their course and their path for life. And I have been in neurosurgery for five years. I love it. At any point in time, I wanted to do something different. I can just go elsewhere, which is the beauty of it. Right. So but that's I also the beauty know of the, of the... far less. And so I'm like <laughs> constantly learning on the job. We all are, but um, you know, the MDs are fantastic in educating us in the way. So correct me if I'm wrong. Would it be a way to sum it up to say that you're a generalist, so you know a lot about a, a lot about many different areas? Uh, a very little about a lot of different areas. areas. I know a very little amount because I kind of dabbled in. Dabbled in the basics. They really teach you the basics of kind of everything, um, with an emphasis on primary care or generalized medicine. Okay. And then if you decide you want to go elsewhere, then you are going to learn a lot more about that specialty, where you might have learned just a little bit about that when you're in your training. Um, so versus if you're an MD, you're going to medical school, learning a lot about, you know, mm -hmm. a little bit about everything, but then you're going to a residency and you're learning a lot about one thing. So, so if you were to give a PA 
piece of advice to a student who's in high school and can earn some certifications while they're in high school and get that clinical experience early? Would, would, would that have been an easier path for you? Um, perhaps it would have been. Um, yeah, so my, my recommendation is if you know that you want to go into the medical field, any chance that you get between, you know, on summer or like in, if you have a J term, volunteer or find a job that's going to actually help direct you at, along the way in that mm -hmm. career path. I did landscaping every summer for four years between college, <laughs> so like that didn't do anything. I made some money, got outside, that was great, but it didn't help me in that path. So perhaps I had to make up for it by taking a little longer between my undergrad and PA program mm -hmm. by, you know, getting these, these patient care roles and maybe I would have gotten into PA school sooner had I had more experience earlier on. Thanks, Andrew, for sh sharing your story with us. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. So we're in the operating room. Dr. Torres, thank you for letting us come in. Um, please tell us a little bit about yourself and what we're going to see here, to, um, what you're going to be doing here today um, at Advent Health Celebration. Good morning. Thank you for having me out here today. So um, I'm Roland Torres. I'm a uh, fellowship trained brain and spine neurosurgeon. So I do a lot of complex brain cranial procedures as well as complicated spine procedures. Today we're going to have a patient who unfortunately has a, a cancer that's spread to his spine and will need surgery to repair it. He has a lot of back pain, he has weakness in his legs, he has numbness, it's very difficult to move around with all the pain that he has. In addition, we're going to biopsy the tissue to confirm that it is the cancer that we know he has in other parts of his body. Wow, that seems like a very complicated case. and so. This machine, is it? you were telling me about it before we started filming, but this machine actually helps you to operate. Exactly. So, you know, medicine is full of all sorts of high-tech approaches. And this, this uh, device is a, uh, ro actually a robot, for those of you who are interested in robots. It's a GPS system for the spine, basically. So when I'm operating, it allows me to localize precisely where I want to be. It allows me to stabilize the spine after I repair him and it allows me to put in screws properly 99.9% .9 of the time. Even in the hands of masters, um, there used to be about a five or 6% complication rate between freehanding them, which is a traditional way of putting in spine instrumentation and using these navigation systems. This is one of the best. Wow, so, so students who are interested in computer science, robotics, those types of engineers. Absolutely, engineers. research and development, programming, or, uh, engineers all walks of life and maybe interested in helping supporting the healthcare system. It's not just about being a doctor or a nurse anymore. That was great. And you also had mentioned that there's the team of people to take care of one patient. So you couldn't do your job with all of these other roles that are happening. Absolutely not. I need the people that develop this. I use this every day. I have a young lady who comes with me and her boss here. They, are, they will work with Medtronics. They support me every time that I put a screw in and make sure that their system is working. They check with me, I check with them, we place the screw, we follow it up with fluoroscopy, we confirm instantaneously, and uh, it's, you know, it's all part of a healthcare team. Dr. Torres, if you had advice for students that you were interested in healthcare, what would that be? Okay. Study hard. <laughs> with, all, with all those kids who are playing Game Boys, or you're going to the movies, or you're hanging out with your friends on your phone, there are little kids that are sitting there reading and doing their homework. And going to school, and it's a really tough road. But you know, I didn't. I wasn't born here. I came here as a kid, and this is what I do now. And you two can do the same thing. You know, this is America. It's a land of opportunities. That's why everybody wants to come here. You know, it's your life. You choose to do what you want with it. But the harder you work, the more benefits you'll get out of it. Thank you so much. We'll make sure that you get to your patient. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much.